mortgage if you have a mortgage and you wondered how to come up with the payments you're about to find out because this is the payment formula that we're going to use there's other variations of it but this is the one that some books use so this is the one we're going to use now this big M represents the mortgage payment we're always going to be doing monthly by the way so that means we're always doing 12 months in a year now the P is the principal it's actually the loan how much you're going to borrow R is the interest rate divided by 12 because because the interest rate given is going to be annually but it's compounded monthly so we're going to divide the interest rate by 12 and the end the big N is the number of compounding periods in a year or I take that back it's the number of compounding periods total for the life of the loan since we're doing monthly that's 12 times in a year so that's 12 times the number of years. So for a typical 30-year loan, that'd be 360 payments. That's all that N means, the number of payments, if you want to think of it like that. So let's do this example. We're going to use a formula. Find the monthly payment. Once again, that's a 12. $150,000 loan, that's your principal or the amount that you invest. It's, it's the loan that you're borrowing, the amount of money that you're borrowing. 30 years, that's just the time, T. 6% is the little r interest rate if you want a little if you want a, a, a variable to represent that but what I want to do first is find big R now big R is just the interest rate divided by 12 so I'm going to take that 6% and I'm going to convert it to a decimal I don't know what that is so I'm going to erase it I don't know where that came from 6% the decimal is on the end so we're going to move it two places to the left which makes it 0 0.06 so I'm going to take the 0 0.06, that's for it one year, but since it's monthly, I'm going to divide it by 12 to find the number of compounded or the periodic interest rate. Let's add another way to think of it. It's the interest rate for every time period. 0 0.06 divided by 12, 0 0.005. And then I need to find the big N. So I'm going to take the number of compound periods in a year which is 12 because it's monthly and I'm going to times it by the number of years when you multiply that out you do get 360 compound periods for the life of the loan That's 360 payments if you make one payment at a time now what I want to do is take this formula and substitute the numbers in and then use our calculator to find the answer the monthly payment so to start the P which is 150,000 in this case big old bracket we just found R to be 0 0.005 over 1 minus parentheses 1 plus there's a R again 0 0.005 and that's raised to the negative and that is a negative exponent big N we found is 360 so the only question remains is how in the world can we get the answer from a calculator once again, I want you to make sure that you, you have this formula down, or formula written correctly. The R is over all of everything. What I'm going to do first, I'm going to use a graphing calculator. Tau 83. Because these are actually a little bit easier to do. So I'm going to type it in almost the exact same way that I would read it. Parentheses and all. I'm not going to use brackets because the brackets don't work like you want them to on the calculator. On the graphing calculator. So I'm going to use two such parentheses. Or do I need to? I only need one for now. That's for these brackets. I'm going to type in 0 0.005 divided by. And I'm going to do one set of parentheses for this numerator, or the denominator. So I'm going to be 1 minus. And then I see this other parentheses. So I need that parentheses. By the way, you always need to put your to the number in parentheses if there's more than one number down there. So that's why I did that extra set of parentheses. So it's 1 minus 1 plus 0 0.005 close parentheses because that's that one right there raised to the negative, that's your negative key 360 close it and then hit enter and we get 899.33 looks like
which sounds about right. Now, let's look at a scientific calculator. On the scientific, I'm going to do the bracket first, because that's the order of operations, which means I need to do the parentheses first. I'm going to do the denominator first, because there's nothing to do in the numerator, but the denominator, I need to do what's inside parentheses. So that's 1 plus 0 0.005 equals, and I'm going to raise that to the negative 360 power, so I hit 360, and this is my negative, equals. Now, I'd like to be able to save that. I think that that M plus probably saves it. Let's just go ahead and type it and see what happens. So, 1 minus memory recall, and it brings it back up, equals, and we get that. Now, I'm going to put that in my memory. It's 0 0.83. Let's do 0 0.005 divided by memory recall. Oh, that wasn't it. Oh, that's not good. So, if you know how to use your memory key, that always works. Let's see if we can figure out maybe a way that everybody can do it. So, let's do 1.0. Point zero zero five. Don't be afraid to try things now on your calculator. Raise that to the negative 360 power. And we get that. Now I'm going to show you a little trick you can do just if you don't want to do the memory key. See that minus sign? It's the same as a negative. So if I hit my negative, it gives me that. And that's a positive 1, so I'm going to add 1. And we get that value. Now, I'm tempted to write that down, and in fact, I'm going to 0.83395. And the more numbers I write, the more accurate my results are. 8071. Let's just say we use that. That'd be nice if I knew how to use my memory. Hey, I want to just use the memory. Can't hurt anything, can it? So now I'm going to type in 0 0.005 divided by, I'm going to type in all that, those digits, 0 0.83395871. And like I said, the more numbers you use, the more accurate you're going to be. Now that's what all of this equals. And then we're going to times that by 150,000. And pretty close. Might be off just by how you round. Sometimes you get a bit lower, sometimes you get a little bit higher. Just depends on how many numbers you use on this step. So, let me get to that again. I'm not going to use the memory key because you may not even have one on your calculator. So here's what I did. I start with the brackets of parentheses. I do, there's nothing in the numerator, so I do the denominator first. I do the parentheses first. 1 plus 0 0.005. I get that answer. Then we'll raise it to the exponent, which is a negative 360. Make sure you use the negative sign. Equals. And you can actually, if you need to, you can write that down. It's totally up to you. Like I did here, you can write a few digits down and make sure you use quite a few. Or you can just use a negative and then plus 1. It's like working right to left. And I wrote down a few numbers. And then I typed in the numerator, because that was just a given number, divided by all that answer, which was that, 0 0.83395807. And then all that is being multiplied by 150,000. And that's how we got our answer, 899.33. So it definitely takes some practice. And if you want to use your memory or experiment with your calculator, that's fine. Or just use a graphing calculator.